Hello and welcome back to Mikey's Flight Deck. This time with a little bit different episode than my normal videos. You may have read I was on the FS weekend in the Netherlands this month and I have tried to catch some interesting impressions for you and also try to make some interviews with some of the exhibitors there. So I hope I could gather some interesting material and let's dive into it. Again, the day started very early in the morning and I made my way here to the FS weekend in Ladystad in the Netherlands. I hope to see some interesting exhibitors here and even meet some of you in real life finally. So let's see what we can discover here. Here we have our first exhibitor, it's uh, Joseph from Switzerland and he has made um, a joke I think and everything is homemade here. Yes, um, my name is Joseph, so from uh, a new startup company Fly Hirundo and I made uh, a yoke and a rudder pedal that is on the other side. Um, at the moment the yoke is still under development, I have to do the final steering wheel a uh, yoke handle and uh, a clamp but otherwise everything is like uh, it should be for the final uh, production and the rudder pedal we can see later on on the other side that is completely finished yes i've, I've also had the possibility to test this and it's extremely smooth i can say yes. uh, everything works absolutely amazing and and how how much time have you invested in uh, getting such a result don't ask my wife, but uh, I, you know, I, I really started two years ago. I have 20 prototypes in, so, okay, yes. you, you cannot count this. But um, it is uh, smooth because um, it's an all stainless steel construction. Um, it runs on roller bearings on linear stainless steel uh, tracks. Um, also for the roll. Uh, you have uh, roller bearings uh, here, so uh, it's uh, very smooth with low uh, friction, and that's important because okay, you have a range of uh, 186 millimeter, and when you do pitch down or pitch up, you like that it comes back in the same position. Otherwise, you have to keep uh, trimming. People also tell me here that uh, the force um, is yeah as it should be. Um, Comparable to the to the real one? Uh, yeah, people who are flying uh, mm -hmm. told me that. Uh, people from France who came with a plane. And it's also adaptable. Uh, people say, I like 90 degrees. Mm -hmm. Other people say, in my plane, I like 60 degrees. Yes. So here we have uh, different mounting positions of holes. So I can you can change the, the screw or bolt to limit at 90 degrees, 75, 60, or 45. Okay, then we will have a look at the pa uh, the pedals or yes. again. So here, also everything handmade by you here? Uh, yes, um, well it's screwed together by hand. It's all stainless steel parts, <coughs> like the yoke. Uh, the resistance to the movement is all metal springs. So eight springs in total, also the, the yoke. Um, and then um, <coughs> The brake force is uh, measured by uh, load cells uh, acting against the spring, so no uh, potentiometers. Um, mm -hmm. So 
Uh, the system will be like that, that uh, you start moving, it's like in a small plane or a car. Initially, the, you feel resistance, but there's no brake signal. Then the brake starts to act. When the brake pads are against the brake disc, the resistance increases. And when the system is completely compressed, then it reaches a stop and then you can apply more brake force. So it's uh, uh, quite sophisticated in terms of three different stages. So I think uh, people would be interested in what is needed to build something like this uh, by themselves. I think, can you tell uh, something about your tools? CNC router, laser cutter, something like this? Uh, okay, my, I, uh, I buy the, the stainless steel parts, I buy them laser uh, cut, because that, that is really industrial, uh, high uh, power laser, uh, you, you cannot do this yourself and also these these parts are, are bent machine uh, bent so you know you, you have to buy that you cannot do it yourself but that also makes it uh, very precise it's two millimeter stainless steel by bending it it provides a very high stability it, it doesn't uh, move or warp or you are a startup uh, company yes. and uh, when do you plan to come out with this uh, these things on the market so the rudder pedal is uh, finished but I still have to make uh, the website. Um, it's the same name as the uh, company, flyhurindo.com. Uh, email address is already organized. So in the next uh, few weeks, I will make the website and with uh, where people can buy. Eye testing on Windows 10, everything works uh, fine. Uh, it works automatic, driver are downloaded automatically. Um, but uh, I have to see what if you do Windows 7 um, and so on. So that's why I'm not just trying to sort of go very wide in the market and, and I, I don't think as a startup you, you, you will go so fast anyway. No yeah. problem. Yes. Yeah, then thanks, uh, um, thanks for showing um, your product here and I wish yeah. you uh, good luck with, with your startup company then. Okay, thanks very much for the interview yeah. and good luck to you as well. So we're here with uh, Mark from the Fatsim Network and we want to uh, discuss some uh, topics with him about getting into this new hobby. So, Mark, hello. Hi. Um, at the beginner in this, uh, to this uh, simulation network, can you describe in short what is Fatsim? Well, Fatsim is basically an online network where everyone can connect to and see each other and fly with each other while also uh, getting some air traffic control service from controllers who are providing their services on every airport in, uh, in the world. When you say and there are controllers and pilots, what do I need uh, to be part of the FATSUM network? Well, depending on what you want to do, if you're going to be a pilot, which I suppose most people will be starting out as, uh, you simply need just one piece of additional software which require, enables you to connect to the network. And this is either going to be something like uh, V-Pilot or X-Pilot, depending on which simulator you are using. And uh, with that, you need an account, and then you can just simply log in and start flying on the network and enjoy the experience uh, with air traffic control services. Is there any special aircraft uh, I have to use, or is any aircraft uh, available in, uh, for Fatsum? Everyone can use every aircraft that they want, uh, so there are no limitations whatsoever. Of course, if you're going to be flying IFR, etc., uh, it's of course better to have a little bit more of a professional uh, aircraft in terms of add-ons. Uh, because it makes the life easier for yourself to fly all the procedures. But basically every airport uh, aircraft will suffice for the network. Right behind the um, release uh, of the new flight simulator, I think the most discussed topic is the release of the new uh, audio codec from uh, Vatsum. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the new uh, features of this codec? Yeah, uh, like you said, a couple of weeks ago, the audio for Vatsum uh, was released, which is a completely rewritten way of 
providing the audio between the pilots and the controllers, uh, which simulates basically the uh, real-world uh, way of communicating over the radio. So with ranges, uh, with VHF simulation, with HF simulation, uh, instead of just using regular voice rooms where people connect on the frequency, where they can talk to basically everyone in the room. Now it's completely rewritten, it's depending on the range, on your altitude. Uh, people can hear you, but others uh, cannot hear you. So it's very dynamic and the quality is a, a huge step forward. So we're very happy that this has finally been released. I think and, and this um, simulation of the real world behavior of a radio is uh, the reason why you don't uh, switch to, for example, TeamSpeak or something like this. Exactly. The limitations of TeamSpeak is first of all the quality of the audio is very much different to what you might expect when you actually talk or listen in on the radio. It's, it's, it's a lot more realistic the way we have uh, it right now. And also the way of uh, communicating with each other in terms of the ranges, it makes it so much more realistic in terms of just a static voice room like TeamSpeak. Are there any uh, special events for uh, 2020, uh, I, I think now, that you are planning on Wetsum? Oh, there are many. Of course, every year, there's twice, twice a year, we have the, the Cross the Pont event, where I think over a thousand uh, pilots will be crossing the Atlantic uh, Ocean uh, twice each year, once eastbound, once westbound. A couple of weeks ago, we just had the eastbound uh, edition, so that will be recurring, of course. And other than that, at Amsterdam specifically, we are, of course, hosting our, our usual events. We'll be doing also our own transatlantic event with uh, Toronto, so uh, in a couple of months, we'll be looking at city pairs between Frankfurt and London as well. And our special run one way event where we use a mixed mode operation at Amsterdam instead of all the usual six runways that we have uh, available. When I want to start uh, flying or controlling on, on Vetsim, where uh, would I start? Just go to vetsim.net, get an account, download the required software that you need in terms of controlling or flying and you're good to go. And then finally, you can sign up also with a local division for your specific area that you're interested in. For example, I'm with the Dutch VACC, so we're focusing on the Dutch area. Then you go to that website, which is dutchvacc.nl, and then you sign up and get in contact with the training program, and they get you sorted out. Anna was able to make an interview with Hanne Cole from ProSim, but unfortunately we had a problem with the focus of our camera, which I noticed the first time when I was back home. But I decided to show you the material anyway, because there are some very interesting informations, especially for those of you who are planning to build a cockpit at home. Uh, as said, Hanne Kohle, I'm one of the co-founders of ProSim. That was back in 2010, together with Marty Bogane. Marty is actually uh, the guy who first started uh, coding ProSim 737. First for himself in 2006, uh, but then started to roll it out after we founded the company in 2010. Uh, I am a commercial responsible, I'm the CEO. When I'm a, a pilot on my PC at home, mm -hmm. when would be the moment I would have to think about getting frozen? Yeah, so most probably you start out with, uh, uh, for instance, Microsoft Simulator, uh, Flight Simulator, you just use a keyboard and your mouse. Yeah. The next thing you would most probably do is buy a joystick, and if you don't still like it, you would want to add, uh, add some hardware, maybe a hardware MCP or a hardware CDU. Uh, of course, you would need to have a flight model add-on to bring more realistic system uh, behavior into your simulator rather than using the default flight models. So there it starts to scratch a little bit because you would be using FSUI PC to connect your hardware and it works but has some limitations. Um, if you would be looking at building a full cockpit where you would use more hardware and where you would also have need more computers to, uh, to connect more displays or more projectors, there you would be looking not not at a flight model and model add-on anymore, but a um, yeah a cockpit builder's avionics suite. What these pieces of software do, they run next to Microsoft Flight Simulator or Lockheed Martin prepared, so they're not limited to the memory and the CPU space they get from the simulator platform, but they, they allow you to spread the system load for your simulator over multiple computers within a network. So I would say if you go cockpit building. 
if you have more than two or three components and if you start adding more monitors, then it would make sense to start looking into a cockpit building uh, suite like ProSim. Yes. You said uh, about the add-ons to the different flight simulators. Uh, which are the, the add-ons uh, which will uh, work together with ProSim? For example, uh, is PMDG working with ProSim? Uh, good question. The answer is no. Uh, PMDG is a beautiful product. It has been developed for uh, desktop gaming and it does a wonderful job. Um, the thing is PMDG contains its own system simulation and that is exactly what we're also doing in ProSim but then external to prepare. So that would interfere with each other. Uh, the purpose of both types of software is different. So you shouldn't combine these. In addition to that, Part of the ProSim suite is also a flight model. What our software does is it simulates all the systems that are in the aircraft, it creates the images on the display units in your uh, cockpit setup, it does the hardware software interface into around about 20 important vendors in this market, it has an instructor operating station, and last but not least it has this flight model. Uh, so it comes inclusive of a flight model. So uh, um, it saves performance on your PC, uh, also uh, using a dedicated software for simulating the, the system, for example? Um, when, when, you, when you say that, for example, PMDG is uh, um, needing performance to uh, simulate everything? Yeah, the, the, the most powerful application running in your simulator setup would of course be Flight Simulator or, or Lockheed Martin Prepare. That would maybe consume all your power in your computer. So you want to offload that computer and run your systems on a secondary computer. Um, when, while developing our software, we, it's very important for us to, to work very efficient with the CPU and the memory. So a complete aircraft, A320 or 737 in ProSim would only take up 5% CPU load. But you want to do that on a secondary computer because your displays are rather heavy. And uh, I think last, uh, last thing, the, uh, the hardware. What hardware uh, would uh, be able easily to integrate to ProSim, most uh, private users are asking for plug-and-play components. Yeah, yeah. Have you some uh, some hardware uh, types which are very easy to connect to ProSim? Yes, um, let me also give a little explanation there. Uh, what has originally been done in this world is connecting hardware using FSUI PC, which is a protocol that sits in between and requires some, some computer knowledge. What we have done in ProSim is we created drivers into our software. So with the companies that we work with, with the hardware vendors that we work with, mostly it's just checking a box in our software in order to activate the driver. And that allows you to connect the hardware quite, quite simple. If I look around me here to the right, I see a cockpit from Scalarkey. It's a vendor from the United Kingdom who do A320 uh, parts. Uh, the other vendor I see on the left there is our partner from Spain, Sismo Solutions or Soluciones. Uh, they have 737 and 737 MAX parts. And other than that, there's a number of good companies out there. It's uh, from, from Poland, FTD Aero slash uh, SimWorld, uh, Flight Deck Solutions out of Canada. These parties would be the parties that we have best experience with, that we cooperate with, that we can do uh, customer support together with. And uh, now the types, uh, so as we've said, uh, A320, 737, uh, these are the types uh, you are simulating in ProSim? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, what we have added new and what we are showing here for the first day uh, time today is the 737 MAX. Um, Please understand that these are all separate products from each other. Uh, so it's not that you buy ProSim and then get all of these aircraft. You choose one of the products which you buy. That is not a, a problem for our customers because our customers have a full-blown cockpit. So they wouldn't swap from one product to the other anyway. But it's different pieces of software for you to understand. Thank you. Then thank you for your time and uh, also have a good time here on the FS Weekend. Thank you very much. Uh, enjoy yourself and please have a look at our beautiful new ProSim 737 Max software if you want to. We will do this. Okay, thank you. Thank you.